Judy and you're watching Running So and So and um, as I tried to say last week on a vlog that I never put out the running is coming back and I was doing really really well and then my gorgeous class teacher was very generous and shared the classroom cold with me but <sighs> walking the girls and I thought you've had not very much Poppy and Maggie lately here's one dog and the other dog is down there probably sniffing something totally disgusting because that's what dogs do isn't it I don't know if I told you a few weeks ago, on my wedding anniversary, Poppy decided to go for a little jaunt and she ran up that road. She got out the woods, up the road and into a finely caught her in a field and because it was, it happened on my wedding anniversary, I sat down and cried and hugged her. I don't know what anybody must have thought of me, but I just don't care. I got my dog back. There you are. I'm back from the most gorgeous dog walk. It's been such a lovely day up here. Um, it's just been one of those gorgeous autumn days where everything is really crisp. Uh, and it's, there's been a little bit of bite to the atmosphere. It's, it's not been as warm as, as it has been, but the sky's been lovely blue skies and gorgeous sunshine. It just really wants to make you get out there and enjoy it. So first of all, I know I have received some coffees from Anne and Levada. Thank you so very, very much. That's extremely kind of you. Also, I want to say thank you to Tamlin and Ruan for the lovely messages that you popped on your YouTube channels about the little gifts I bought you back from America. That was absolutely gorgeous. And Ruan, thank you so much for the gorgeous card. Ruan gave me a lovely card last weekend and it was so, so beautiful to read. So it's really touching. Thank you very much. And on the back of that, Tamlin and Ruan both mentioned me on their channels and I've got a little flurry of new subscribers. So if you're new here, welcome aboard. Lovely to have you and thank you ever so much for taking the time to watch my videos and to subscribe. Also to anybody who has continued to watch and to like my vlogs over the past few weeks. I know I've been a bit calm on the old uploading and I shall come to that now. Now, some of you will be aware that this last week I appeared on the Love to Sew podcast which is run by Helen from Helen's Closet and Caroline from Blackbird Fabrics. Now back um, probably in the early summer they put out a call on Instagram for anybody who'd been sewing for a long period of time and Tamlin put a little note on something along the lines of Judy, <laughs> question, smiley face. So I thought okay so I just followed it up and sent them a little message saying yeah I have been sewing for a long time. I even have to stop and think how long I've been sewing. 62 minus 4, 58 years. I just said, you know, 58 years, any interest to you? Here's my email address, if you want to get in touch, do so. They did. And I got a long list of instructions from them, from the lovely Lisa, um, and she told me exactly what she wanted. She told me the angle, because I said, you know, I've seen so much, what angle do you want? So she gave me a couple of angles. So I sat down before I had my surgery, and my time limit, it had to be in, um, sometime during the time I, I was in recovery after my surgery. So I made certain I got this delivered to, to um, Love to Sew before I went into the hospital. And I spent one weekend sat down writing what I wanted to say and then recording it, which was hilarious because even when I listen to it back on the Love to Sew podcast, you can hear Poppy and Maggie in the background. And I'm like, they've got to get themselves in everywhere, haven't they? I just can't have any time without them. Anyhow... Yeah, I got a lovely, lovely email from them a week last Thursday saying, long time so is episode. Thank you ever so much for your time and contribution. I thought, oh, here we go. You don't want me. We are delighted to say we've included portions of your... And I'm like, whoa. And I was like, I actually went into a bit of shock. And I walked back into the classroom and Laura was like, what's it with you? And I went, I'm going to be on the Love to Sew podcast. And then I had to explain to her what the Love to Sew podcast was. Once I'd come down to earth, I was able to sit back and enjoy the moment. Uh, so I'm going to put a link in here to the um, Love to Sew, the name Love to Sew. Go to the description box, which will be below, and have a little look. It'll be right at the top, Love to Sew podcast, and at the top will be the link to the podcast. And I'm not going to tell you when I come on, because I want you to listen to the whole thing, because... It's amazing. I am a fan of the Love to Sew podcast and I will hold my hand up and say I am one of their Patreons. But I was doing that long before I got involved. I just love them. I just love to go. But 
When I was on the Love to Sew podcast, I mentioned something. I mentioned my very first sewing basket. You don't need that. And this, if you listen to the podcast, this is my very first sewing box. And this was a gift to my parents when I was just turned seven or just turned eight. I can't remember. And this was my Christmas present. But what I can remember was that mum put a few little bits and pieces in here. And I used and used and used these little pieces to death. So I'm just going to pause you while I open it and reset the camera. Now, here she is. This lovely raffia design is starting to uh, fade a little bit. So I thought you might like to see what's inside it. Now, the things you find in a sewing box, I have got, and when some of these things went in, I don't know, but I've got some self-cover buttons, buttons and mixed needles. Look at these. Heavy duty needles by Tootle. That's an upholstery needle. That's for sewing um, on your, um, if you wanted to sew cushions and mend something on your sofa. I think this is the best thing, this little box here. Can you see that? I bought that in um, 1976. I, no, bought the box in 1976 because I went on a school cruise. And inside it, oh look, it's got my very first patchwork pack. Uh, template. Now my brother made this for me. I'm sure I've shown these on a vlog before but there's nothing wrong with showing them again. And inside is a little wooden tea set and that's the tray. Now this little wooden tea set is very precious because I, I'm, I don't know if anybody else is like me but I keep things that my parents have given me or have been special presents and this was a little gift to me. It was made in the farmers market in Waterloo, Ontario, Canada. 1972 and it was a Christmas present and look it even has a fruit bowl I don't know if I can get it on but the fruit bowl has three apples I only put one apple on there oops can you see my one apple look at that there's three of those and I've got all three apples in there if you look carefully you can see all three apples so that's very precious now the other thing I've got in here, actually it's quite good that I've got these because when Adam was up, I showed Adam a quilting frame. Adam, those are the pegs with a quilting frame to attach the uprights to the cross part at the bottom. I do have them. <laughs> Tell you. Darning wool, that's my daughter. Right, daughter dealt with. So at the bottom here I've got various threads and beads and things but I have just pulled out a few things of interest I've got more needles and darning thread I've got silk stranded thread which I would have bought at the knitting and stitching show many years ago thinking I was going to use it I've got some silver metallic thread which you couch down by hand I've got fake gold thread it won't be the real thing uh, more embroidery needles and these are clasps for my Norwegian jumpers look at this I've even found some of these bag handles I didn't know I had any bag hardware I do now don't I so that is the contents of my box so there you go that is my gorgeous little box but when I listened to myself on the podcast and I looked at the box, it got me thinking about what sewing means to me. And sewing has always been a part of my life. I've always sewn. I've always had something in a basket to go to. Something in my mind that I want to make. And it got me thinking to sewing now. Now, what I'm going to say, it's, it's me and it's how I'm thinking at this point in time. But I feel as if I'm on a bit of a treadmill and I'm like going faster and faster and faster, trying to keep up with everything. So last weekend I decided that I was gonna get off the treadmill and I'm gonna try and go back to my sewing. Now, you won't notice any difference because I've always sewn and there's always a plan in my mind there's always something to share there'll always be something on this table because there always has been something on a sewing table whether it was upstairs in the top bedroom when David was alive 
a dining room table stuffed into a basket somewhere, shoved in the corner of the dining room. There's always been something on the go. And I've not just had one box on the go, I've had several boxes on the go. And there's always been ideas, and there's always been work in progress. So you will notice no difference. But with regards to my mental health and how I move forward, I want to say what I want to say. And I'm not one of these for jumping on the bandwagon of, oh, there's a new pattern now, I must make it, must, 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 must make it. It's the next thing I'm going to make, and whiz, 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 and let's get it done first. That's not me. I want to sew for pleasure, and I want to enjoy my sewing. And I have felt a little bit over the past year or so that I've tried to just keep up, keep up, keep up, keep up. It's not me. I love getting fabric deliveries. I love getting subscription boxes. Adore them. Love watching YouTube videos. And I love watching what everybody else does. But it doesn't mean to say I have to do it. I want to be me. If you ever go to a sewing social and you meet me, this is what you get. Me. So there you are. Lecture over. Not so much a lecture over, but thoughts over and done with. And on the note of fabric deliveries... I've had one. Well, it's 10 years since Atelier Brunette started, isn't it? So how could I not buy a fabric? Just gorgeous. It's a viscose. It's not been washed. And I have bought it exactly the amount that I need. And I am going to put it on Stash Hub. Because I want to make a Frida blouse with it. And it had, had a bit of an offer that if you spent 50 50 euros you got a free bag and I wanted the lovely purple Atelier brunette bag that they were offering but they ran out so they sent me one of the special bags um, free and I bought one of the special bags so they have it in blue and they have it in blush so I managed to get them both and I've also popped in order to get it to 50, 50 euros I put a couple of chalk marking pencils in now these are always very very useful so that's what I've been doing there. So they are going to go away and not get made straight away. The reason, and they're going on the pile over here, which is where I've got my other beautiful fabric. I have gone back to Slimming World. Uh, I think I might have mentioned it in an earlier vlog. And I have now lost 12 and a half pounds. Um, which has taken me by surprise because I didn't think it would, it would come off quite as quickly as it has. Yeah, it's all very well losing weight, but I have now had to spend another £20 and buy new bras. So I've gone down a complete chest size and a cup size. So that was quite a bit of a double whammy, so I was delighted with that. So losing weight is one thing, but the side effects of losing weight when you have to start buying new underwear starts to get a little expensive. But I have been sewing, because uh, last weekend um, I went um, down to the a stitched up social that was run by Rachel and I decided to make a couple of tops so I cut them out the night before so the first one I made was a toaster sweater now if you saw my Instagram stories you will have seen that this lovely toaster sweater was on my Instagram stories. this is a beautiful fabric and this fabric is available from Bugweeds now if you just pause a minute so I put the big Bugweeds Instagram handle I'm not going to edit that out because it happens all the time, the Bugweeds Instagram handle. The Bugweeds Instagram handle down below. They do still have this utterly gorgeous fabric, I can tell you. But I did some careful cutting out when I made my toaster sweater. And I managed to, because I used ribbing, she says reaching over for the ribbing, which I popped up to Bugweeds to buy. Anyway, I picked up some ribbing there because I wanted to see how many jumpers I could get out of it. And I got a linden! But when I was at the sewing social, I hadn't cut the neckline big enough. It happens to us all! I was busy thinking of something completely else and I forgot that the pattern said cut on fold. <laughs> I cut it once, not on the fold. So, I will cut another neckline to go in and make myself another lin make this into another linden. I love my two fa three favourite jumpers in the winter are the Charlie sweater by Atelier Jupe, the toaster sweater by Soho 7 and the linden sweater by 
Grain Man Studio. I will put all the links in the description box below. I've also got another couple of makes because I have been busy. I think um, I want to sew when I need to sew, not when I feel that I have to sew. When I need to sew, when I need new tops. This particular top is starting to wear and when you've got jersey you start to get fading and, and it doesn't have the stretch in it that it used to have. So I had a scrap of this, this is a See You at Six fabric and I actually made the page hoodie during a stitched up social, uh, stitched up social, oh my gosh my brain's all over the place today, stitched up sew along a few years ago and I made the hoodie for Hannah and there was enough of this left and with a little bit of careful cutting I managed to get out another Linden sweater for myself. So not only am I getting quite prolific with these jumpers, I'm getting quite crafty with the cutting. This is the Charlie sweater by Atelier Jupe, made with one of the fabrics from the boxes we got in August. And this is gorgeous to wear for work. I love the balloon sleeve effect on the Charlie sweater. I think it's a really, really, really feminine sweater to have. And if you use the ribbing, round the neck it gives a really professional finish now if I just bring this in in fact I won't use this one I'm going to use this one so I think you'll see it a bit clearer but can you see how carefully if you pop it in as carefully as they describe on the instructions and you tack it first or pin it carefully you will get that lovely lovely flat finish now sometimes I do go around this with the cover stitch but I looked at it and I earned it and I thought you know that doesn't need any kind of fiddling with. Leave it well alone, Judy. It looks brilliant. So I was really happy with that one. But, and I'm sorry I'm turning my head away from you because I'm going into here to pick up something that I want to make. And here I've got the most gorgeous, I'm looking at how long I've been talking, not too long. I bought this piece of fabric at Bugweeds. I think it's a Stoff of Denmark one. I know that you can buy Stoff of, stuff of Denmark at Bugweeds and at First for Fabrics. But this is just gorgeous. And when I was at Soho House 7, the lovely Becky, Becky Jo said, she gave me this blouse and she went, Judy, I think this will look great on you. And I put it on and she said, you need more salmon. So I saw this and I said to Hannah, Becky Jo says, I need more salmon. And guess what it's going to be? It's going to be the blue version. It's the other version of the, the um, Soho House 7 toaster sweater. It's version 2. Um, whether I do the split opening, I don't know. The chances are I won't. I might just do it so it falls flat and then hem it and just put a gorgeous little um, bit of top stitching on the cover stitch around. But this, I think, is absolutely gorgeous. Really lovely. Can you see that? I just absolutely love this. It's not a French terry, it's just a standard jersey. So it'll make a very sweet little toaster sweater that I could probably put another layer underneath, but it's got that gorgeous stuff of Denmark quality to it. Now, the other thing I was I carried on with at the Stitched Up Social was the tree skirt. The tree skirt's coming together and I'm desperate to try and get onto that. So, just reflecting on what I've got here in front of me, I've got three sweaters that I've made because I've needed them. I've got one to finish. The other thing that I would love to make if I get the chance and the time and I've got everything in that I need to make it is the Simplicity 1499 and it is a gilet. Now I have a beautiful gilet but it is getting too big for me and my daughter is thinking that could work for me. But Jane from So Like Jane over in Portland very kindly sent me this pattern. And I would like to do view B with the inside pockets. So that will need a little bit of thought when at lunch times this week. But I do have the fabric, so excuse me turning away from you. But just here, I have some beautiful quilted fabric, which I bought to make this pattern last year. And it came when Tamlin put a drop up on First Fabrics. So whether they've got this exact fabric, I'm not quite certain, but in the description box, if they have got quilted fabric, I'll put quilt, first for fabrics, quilted fabric, link. If not, I'll just put first for fabrics. You can get in touch with first for fabrics and ask if they're going to get any of this. And I'm sure that the lovely ladies up at first for fabrics 
We'll get back in touch with you and tell you if it's on their buying list or not. I have got a pattern test that I would like to get on with this week. I've done one. I'd like to do another one tomorrow. So when I have finished recording this, I'm going to go onto my printer and I'm going to print the pattern off again because the one I've made is too big for me. Hence the other reason I don't want to get drawn into making lots of clothes because it's just going to be a waste of money. So please don't think I'm going to stop recording or I am going to stop sewing. That is the furthest thing from the truth. It might just be slightly different to what everybody else is doing. And uh, I love indie patterns, so I love all the new indie patterns that are coming out. And I've got some gorgeous fabric and patterns that came from Andrea with my last Think Pink box. And I want to make them, but if I'm losing weight this fast, it's a waste of time and it's a waste of fabric to make while I'm losing Thank weight. You. With me looking at other things to sew and that I'm a prolific sewer and I'll sew anything, I love patchwork, I love quilting, and I love all the little things like the bags and the little bowl cozies, etc, etc. Um, my friend Melanie has got two grandchildren, she's got two gorgeous grandchildren. And you know these instant calendars that you can buy, that you have to cut the bits out of to make them up? Um, this is not going to come out very well at all. These things, because I've got half of it cut out. I've got a couple of those cut out which I really want to finish for Remy and Olivia so that they've got them for this year's Christmas. So that is the job. So... Going forward, my sewing jobs are neck band, pattern test, gilet, Christmas. And then it'll be Vlogmas. Oh, have I got some ideas for Vlogmas? <laughs> Cheeky laugh. I really laugh. Oh, I shouldn't laugh because I don't want to give anything away. <sighs> Maggie's looking at me as if to say, what is that whooper going on about? So, I hope to not have edited too much of this vlog. And I hope you've enjoyed watching what I've had to share with you today. It's been lovely to be able to show you some makes. Yes! And hopefully going forward, I will be able to show you more makes. What I am going to be doing this coming week is the um, there's a lovely feature coming up on Friday Sews. And we've all started it. So, if you... I love watching a Friday Sews video. I'm going to be doing one. I don't know when it's going to come out. Whether, knowing my, my luck, it could come out the early hours of Friday morning. It could come out the early hours of Sunday morning. I just need to uh, feed the mice on my internet treadmill and you might get a vlog. So, everybody, well, thank you so much for sticking with me today. And if you like what you've seen, do hit that subscribe button. Send me a comment. I'm priding myself in trying to get in touch with everybody that sent me a comment not just a like I'm trying to send you a message and reply to your comments if you've taken the time to comment to me I'm going to take the time and comment back to you I know I'm a little behind as you can tell I've had a cold and don't start me on colds because currently I just view them as a total waste of time and an utter inconvenience and I don't think I'll be alone on that so for now Thank you so much for staying with me. Have the most wonderful week. Take care of yourselves and see you soon. Bye.